It's Christmas season. I love this time of year. And I know at least one pastor who is talking today about this being a difficult time or a complicated time. I polled folks about their feelings about Christmas and the results of my very unscientific poll were that people cited time with loved ones, reviving tradition, sharing love and through baking and crafting and being in joy through music and movies is their favorite and most cherished parts. And many also mention missing loved ones as a sad part of the holiday. I too have sweet memories of Christmas past, foggy Christmas light viewing, performing in the Nutcracker, circling items in the department store catalog with my sister, put our initials by it so it would be very clear for Santa to know making family recipes, putting up lights, all the lights. And that one year that my parents got Santa to come early since there'd been a snowstorm and my dad was off work five days early. If you didn't know, my mom has got a lot of pull with Santa. So now you know. Through it all, as I can remember, my family, as long as I can remember, my family celebrated Advent the four Sundays before Christmas. That starts today. <laughs> we celebrate with readings and candles and music. And it's one, one of the most meaningful parts of the season. So this is the start of Advent. Advent is a time of making way for Christmas. Just as we may prepare for Christmas in outer ways, like decorating or making Christmas, sending Christmas cards, etc. Advent is to remind us about the inner preparation. I've long said it's the journey to Christmas, but it's also a realigning with our highest selves. It's not like it went away. Maybe we just got busy. Christmas comes from Chris, Christ Mass which is a celebration of the birth of the Christ in Jesus. In unity, we teach that the Christ energy is in all of us with the same potential for expression. So Christmas is also a celebration of the birth slash rebirth of the Christ in you. So the theme for the season that I chose is more than just Christmas. It's the feeling of Christmas. My hope is that while we may be feeling some easing after uncertain and difficult times, it's been a complicated couple of years. And, you know, we're, we're firing up, we're re getting going with some traditions we've missed in the last few years. I hope that we can also go deeper into the reminders from an experience of the holy day, the holy season, that we can take some of the lessons of this decade so far and allow them to inform how we live going forward. Now, many of us have studied the historical context of the Christmas story. We have lots of knowledge in our brains. And there's plenty of insight and wisdom there about what may or may not have really happened 2,000 years ago. But the story has not endured because of its historical accuracy, thank goodness, but because of what it means. So we're going to look metaphysically at some Bible characters and some more recent ones, see what we can see. Often we start Advent with the Magi because they're people who saw something unusual in the stars and took a long and expensive journey based in hope and faith to discover what the stars foretold. 
And that's one of the reasons we start with the Magi often when we talk about Advent, because the first theme for Advent, the first Sunday is hope. Some people like to say faith. I say hope sometimes is like the starter version of faith. So the Magi, I mean, maybe they had faith that what they saw was actually happening. Maybe they just had hope. Maybe they went back and forth. It's okay. So something to think about as we're allowing the lessons of the season to really lead us is to just think about when have we, how, when have you been like the wise ones? When have you taken a journey that may not have made sense to everyone? It was based in faith. When have you taken a leap that maybe was based somewhere between hope and faith even? But the Magi don't only teach us that. They also remind us to listen to our inner wisdom. You know, none of our spiritual qualities rely only on, you, you, they, they, none of them live alone, right? So our inner wisdom, Magi, they realize King Herod may not have had the best intentions. So they chose a different route. When have you relied on your inner wisdom to guide your way? And what did you learn? Now, speaking of Herod, Herod has a lot to teach us. He represents an unhealthy ego. He represents someone who has not done their spiritual work, right? The domineering and sense consciousness. He was interested in power and smashing anything that threatened his power. He's also the antithesis of walking in faith. But, or and, maybe we could extend a little compassion towards him. I would say that his fear and we could extrapolate that he probably had a sense of unworthiness. And these things caused him to clench and destroy. And well, we have not, I hope, gone as far down the road of ruthlessness as Herod. We can recognize the times, maybe, where we have not seen ourselves in the stranger or caused harm, either willfully or by our own ignorance. Or even holding on because of fear or a sense of unworthiness. Ooh. See, Herod has a lot to teach us. And I would argue that um, the Herod archetype, while Herod himself does not get redeemed, I would say that the Christmas classic at Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens is about the redemption of that archetype, right? While Herod does not end up rede getting redeemed, Scrooge does. Scrooge learns a new way. And so can we. That's what the journey of Christmas is about. We embrace our inner wise ones and take the wise, faithful step. We can continue to heal our belief in separation and unworthiness. And remember, like Scrooge, that we always have the opportunity to grow. and to keep Christmas in our hearts all year long. 
I believe the world would be a better place if we could live from a Christmas feeling year round. And what do I mean by that? It's not about everyone being someone who celebrates Christmas. It's about the feeling of Christmas. At Christmas time, we put lights and signs in our yard that say peace on earth. And it's okay, like it's the normal thing to do. We give generously to those in need. We share joyful greetings with our friends and neighbors. Whether they're greetings of Christmas or one of the many other religious holidays of the season. We sing joyously about what we're without worrying whether we're good. We're brave enough to envision our harmonious world and listen to our inner wise one. We get quiet and light candles and contemplate life. Those all seem like good things to do all the year, all year long, right? Finally, we remember our dear ones who aren't with us. This can be sad and bittersweet. The traditions of the past feel weird without our loved ones there. And so this I propose, not only remembering and missing our dear ones, but to evolve and pass on the traditions that we care to pass on and not only at Christmas, but through the year to keep the love and the wisdom and the joy of our ancestors with us. I imagine my dad who always helped, I always helped put up the Christmas lights, would find delight in the fact that we have ours up and on for extended time, thanks to the Anchorage tradition of keeping lights on until the end of the Iditarod. Totally embrace that. It brings both a catch to my heart and a smile to my face. And for some of us, this may, year may feel hard. And it's okay. We don't have to pretend if our answer to how we are is it's complicated. we can embrace that as part of something we take through our year as well. And this is why I believe in the word hope as well as faith. Hope is about an intention, a wish. Faith is a knowing. So my intention, my wish, for you, my hope, as we begin this Advent season that is about grounding in and not just about the feeling of Christmas for these four weeks, but for all year, is that we can, even in the bittersweet times, we can open our hearts to the love and the wisdom the knowing of the Christmas season and that we keep it going all year long. 